Hi, welcome to video two. This video is on CSS. Remember when we left our, our website at the end of video one, it looked pretty basic, not very exciting. Okay, just words on our screen. So this language that we're gonna learn about now, CSS, is designed to enhance the content of your website and make it look pretty and stylish, okay? So let's take a look and dive deeper into what that language looks like. Again, repeating and just to make sure, CSS makes our HTML content look pretty. So what we code first is our HTML with our tags. Remember open body tag, we had our heading tag, we had a H2, a subheading, we had a paragraph tag, and then we wrapped up our whole website with the close body tag. And that was what we had accomplished yesterday. The next step is to make those words appear pretty. So CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. This is the style of your website. If we want to take a look at an example, we can look at the computer screen on the left. The green tags are your HTML coding that we learned about in video one. You can see how it's set up with the body tags, open and close, H1, open and close, and paragraph tags, open and close. We see the second computer screen has a new language. It's between two style tags, which are written in HTML, and the blue text is your CSS coding. Uh, that is going to add what you see in the third screen, the colors, the styles, the sizes, and all the fun stuff to your website. There are two ways that you're going to learn how to do CSS coding. The older way is to put all of your code on a single page. That means my CSS is on the same page as my HTML. That's not typically how someone in the web design field would do it, um, but it's also an acceptable format. So let's take a look at what internal CSS would look like. So here's my content, my HTML tags. And if I come right above that, I, it's like I have two parts of my website. I have my content and my HTML. And up here above that, I can type style open and create a style close to create my CSS section, okay? Between those tags, similar to how my HTML went between the body tags, my CSS code will go between the style tags. So I'll type H1, which is my selector, okay? And you'll learn about that in just a moment, but this is called a selector. I'm selecting the H1 tag from below. That's the Miss Watts' fan page part open braces, and I need that on the same line. There we go, open braces, enter. And then I'm gonna type, I wanna change the color of Miss Watts' fan page to red. So color red, and then enter, and another one of those closed braces. And now I can see because of this code, which is the CSS that I've highlighted, this is the language I'm typing in CSS, my heading, my H1, Miss Watts's fan page that came in my H1 tag is now selected and turned red because of my internal CSS. Same page as my HTML. Okay, so that is internal CSS. The other type of CSS that you can have, which is common among most web designers, is external CSS, where your HTML is in one location, one file, and your CSS is in a second separate file. And that the two talk to each other through a link. That is why they're external. They're connected just by a link. So as you can see here, I've highlighted where that link comes in my code. You can see my HTML is on this page, all my tags. And then over on the computer screen to the left, is that same H1 uh, CSS coding. So let us take a look how external CSS looks like. So my HTML is all on this file called index. If I run it, you'll see my website, same website. This is all HTML here. It's called my index file. If I go back to my files, oh, 
And one more thing in that index, just to take a look at what the slide showed, here's this comment that says load external CSS and it puts that link to connect me to a file called styles.css. So my computer knows to search for a file called styles.css. So if I come into that file, it says place all my CSS code here. I do not need um, the style tags in my external CSS version. I can simply type that selector H1 open bracket color and red end it with the semicolon and run it. And there's the same effect, but in this case, all my CSS will be in one place. All my HTML will be in another place. It makes it a lot more streamlined and easy for someone who's coding hundreds of lines of code to know where their CSS is and where their content, their HTML is. That way, if like a client says, hey, I don't really like red, um, could you go make my heading blue? All you have to do is come into this smaller document and then come in and say, color client wants blue. And I'm gonna type blue and then run. And now my website is blue. So it's a lot easier to see. It's a lot more compact um, when you're working with someone who's asking you to look through a hundred lines of code or thousands of lines of code. Okay, so external and internal CSS. Let us break down the parts of CSS. So we talked about HTML had the greater than and less than symbols, the backslash, that was kind of the basics of it. Um, you had those tags. CSS is made up of some very important vocabulary words for you to learn. So the first of those vocabulary words is selector. Um, and you've heard me mention that during this course of this talk, is that I came in here and said, I'm gonna type an H1 selector. So I can have a selector for any tag that I've created. So remember my who doesn't love steam? If I look at my code, that was in a H2, H2. So I can come into my CSS and say, I want my H2 select. And let's say I want that to have a color of green. Okay, I want Miss Watts is the words that were surrounded by the H2 tag I'm selecting them with my H2 selector because I want to turn them green on my code. And now I can see they're green. So these selectors match with the code you have over here. I have one more tag I could do, the P. So I can come in here to my code and I can type P, open brackets. Let's say I want this one not to be a color, but I want it to have a background and let's say yellow, okay, run. And now my paragraph, the words that were in my paragraph tag, right here, the best exploratory yet, those were selected by my CSS selector and they turned yellow. If I want something to happen to my entire website, let's say I want the entire website to have a background color, then the selector I would use is that body one because the body tag spans my whole website. The body selector would do things to the entire website. So let's type in our idea and see what happens. Background and pink. Let's see what happens. Are we right? The whole website turns pink because that body tag again, spans your whole website, okay? So that was selector. Selector are those words out here. In this case, they're like a light blue or a darker blue color. If I zoom in, they're the words that come up in this brighter blue color for me in my text editor, okay? Those are selectors. They are selecting the HTML tag that you want to make look pretty. Property. Property or what I want to change. So it's nice that I say, hey, I want my H1 to be pretty, but what is it about the H1 that I want to make look pretty? What is it that I want to do to the words Miss Watts's fan page? Do I want to make them bigger? Do I want to make them colorful? Do I want to give them a font? That's what the property will do for you. So if I come into my code, right now I've used 
two different properties. I've used the property called color and I've used the property called background. Property is the word right here after the selector and the braces that I'm using to tell my H1, hey, I want your color to be blue. Okay, so property are those light, light blue colors um, that come before the colon. So let's see if I want to change the font size. And all the properties come up as suggestions. Font size, uh, I'm going to put, and these are, you can do pixels, 100 pixels. And then I'm going to run it. Now I see Ms. Watts' fan page has grown in size. It is now 100 pixels big. So font size was the property. Color was the property. It's telling my H1, what is it that I want to style about you? The next term in your CSS is the value. What is it that I'm telling the property I want to set it to? So it's nice that I yell at my website, hey, H1, I want your color to change, but I need that value to tell the H1, I want you to be red. Okay, so you have to have that third piece, the value. The value is going to set the property to some specific item. So our properties are out here as the third term, blue, 100 pixels. So they can be colors, they can be measurements, uh, all colors here. Um, if I'm doing like font family as my property, then I can do something like Lucinda. That's the name of the font. And I can see it changes the font. Okay. Um, so the value is what are you setting your property to become? Um, for my H2, maybe it's that I want to change the, um, I'm trying to think of another one that we could use with that. Uh, maybe we want a border, border, whoop, border, and it's going to set the size to two pixels, that border, and I want it to be a solid border, and I want it to be black. Okay, and then end that with the semicolon. Run. I should see around my Y doesn't... Why, who doesn't love steam? A black two pixel solid border. Okay. Um, and that's the property and the value. So property value. So we've got selector, property, value. Okay. The last piece of our CSS code is the syntax. This is all the symbols that you have to use to make your computer know when to start reading, stop reading, when the next term comes. So these are your braces, colon, and your semicolon. And you can see in our code where we use each of those. So after the selector, I put one of the braces. After the property, there is a colon. And at the end of the value, there is always a semicolon. And the entire section that I'm telling the H1, all the things that I want the H1 to do, when I'm done listing those, and I can have hundreds of them in there, I close that section with a closed brace that I can put the next selector and then close brace next selector. So every selector has an open as well, open brace and a close brace when you're done styling it. Okay. They're all little chunks. Okay. So that is the terminology that goes along with CSS. And here's just one more image. Um, so you can see where those things are. H1 is my selector up here. Okay. And it goes with that tag there. Every selector can has a tag. Tag for a selector. I have a paragraph tag, so I can have a paragraph selector in my style. Okay. And finally, just pointing out one final time the pieces. There's my selector in red, the H1. I'm selecting the H1. I have blue properties, background, font size, color, and font family. Those are all properties. Blue, 36 pixels, orange, and Arial are all the values for those properties. And then the syntax is anything you see in black. The open brace, close brace, colons after properties, and semicolons after values. Okay, And that is how you set up your CSS. So after this video in Edpuzzle, you'll be playing around with the CSS and HTML in the text editor that is linked in your folder today. Have fun and let's see what you create.